Good evening and welcome to Left, Right and Center. I'm Vishnu Shoma. A big debate this evening. The U.S. President Joe Biden has dropped out of the U.S. presidential election and has endorsed Vice President Kamala Harris as the Democratic Party's new nominee. That's a massive political development, huge international ramifications. Mr. Biden, who has uh, come under the scanner recently for his ability to lead the United States, given his age and mental fitness, has said that he's acting in the best interest of his party and the United States. Now, he bows out after a disastrous Jew debate against Donald Trump. Kamala Harris has confirmed her intention to become America's first woman president and to defeat Donald Trump. But at this stage, the big question is, does she enjoy overwhelming support among the Democrats? What about, for example, Barack Obama? The U.S. President Joe Biden has dropped out of the U.S. presidential election and has endorsed Vice President Kamala Harris as the Democratic Party's new nominee. That's a massive political development with international ramifications. Joining us now to look at this, uh, David K. Johnson, a recipient of the Pulitzer Prize, uh, a well-known commentator. Thanks very much uh, for being with us. Raymond Vickery, Minakshi Ahmed and Dr. Sampat Shivangi with us as well. Um, David K. Johnson, in a sense for the Democrats, was it too late, this announcement by Mr. Biden? Um, there were so many questions which were raised about his fitness to lead the United States. Uh, a decision has finally come, but is it perhaps too late for the Democrats? I, I don't think so. It would have been better if it were earlier, and it would have been better if he had not had this disastrous debate performance. But uh, she's a well-known figure, and uh, there will be some challenges. The Republicans have already indicated they're going to try to prevent Kamala Harris from having access to the money, about a quarter of a billion U.S. dollars raised by the Biden-Harris campaign, and they may try to keep her off the ballot in Ohio. I don't think either of those will work. And I think there's plenty of time for Kamala Harris, uh, who's a former prosecutor, to take uh, her case uh, to the public against the convicted felon, Donald Trump. Mr. Vickery, what sort of uh, support does Kamala Harris enjoy within the Democrats? I ask this because still a couple of hours back, Barack Obama hadn't publicly endorsed her. Well, thanks very much for having me. I think she has uh, broad support uh, within the party, but uh, nobody wants it to look like the uh, nomination was just handed to her in uh, sort of a backroom kind of deal. And she said herself in her statement that she wants to earn uh, the uh, nomination and endorsement. So there will be uh, a, a relatively open uh, kind of situation in which if there are others who want to step forward and say that they're better suited, uh, they'll have that opportunity to do so. But at this point, I think that there has been, one, a lot of showing of gratitude toward Joe Biden uh, for the terrific job he's done as president and also for finally doing uh, the right thing here in uh, the interest of the nation. Uh, but second, I think that there is also uh, a relief and a feeling that uh, Kamala Harris is a person, as a former prosecutor, who can really take the fight uh, to Trump, uh, that she can in real time try to co uh, correct some of the numerous lies uh, that he puts out as his debate technique. So I think there's a feeling of uh, optimism here, but make no mistake about it, American democracy is still very much in danger. Uh, as has been said, the Republicans are trying to keep funds away, trying to keep uh, Kamala Harris off the ballot. Uh, they're going to pull out uh, all the stops, uh, not just those in terms of election, but any way that they can. So we have to stand together. India is a great democracy. The U.S. is a great democracy. We must, uh, we must adhere to those values and see that they are uh, not circumscribed or done away with by an authoritarian uh, like Trump. I mean, actually, um, is um, Michelle Obama at all interested from, the, from, from what we understand at this stage at sort of stepping in over here? Because <laughs> it's been trending all over the world. Uh, is Michelle next? And, uh, you know, she's resisted so far. But is there, you know, intense pressure for her to, to step up to the plate? Okay, in one word, N-O. That is a fantasy. Um, uh, Kamala Harris enjoys 
of the uh, support of the Democratic Party and another 20, 20 to 30 percent view her favorably. So that's a pretty strong majority. 179 legislators to date have come out and endorsed her. Mm -hmm. The four or five strong presidential candidates that could have run against her have all come out and endorsed her. So that tells you that she is going to get the unconditional support of everyone. The only reason that President Obama and Nancy Pelosi, who really is, been in, the, the two of them have been instrumental in getting President Biden to step aside. The only reason that they have not come out uh, fully, um, you know, they have not endorsed her is because they don't want the Democratic Party to feel that they have anointed her. And there should be some sort of a process of approval from the delegates and from um, the party in general. They, they're too short to have an open election. I think everyone has come around to that conclusion. There's just not enough time left. When uh, President Johnson um, steps, stepped aside in 1968, it was in March. So there was plenty of time till uh, the election. Um, but here we have, we're like 100, you know, just not enough time, the 100 and some days out. So um, I think they're going to be galvanizing support. She's raised, the party has raised 50 million, Kamala Harris has raised $50 million uh, in, um, in funds just since Sunday, since right. the announcement. That should tell you something. Yeah, okay, that's interesting. Uh, Dr. Sampath Shivangi, uh, would the, the Trump campaign at this stage uh, focus on the fact that he was nearly assassinated a couple of days back? Uh, it has, prior to that, focused almost entirely on an anti-Biden agenda. Going forward, what is, the, what is the primary agenda for the Republicans in this election? Oh, yeah, thank you so much for uh, inviting me. Uh, as you know, I was a delegate at the yes. uh, party convention just uh, last week. I just came fresh from there, and uh, there is a lot of unity amongst Republicans. Uh, and he has got a big sympathy force coming in, in his way because of uh, it trying to assassinate him. And, uh, you know, if you go by the economy of the U.S., it's almost 23 to 29 percent there's inflation in the U.S. after uh, after President Trump left the office. And, uh, you know, in four years of Trump, there were no wars, no conflicts with uh, conflicts internationally. And uh, the economy was booming. Uh, there was no issue of immigration problem. Now, you know, with all the due respects to Kamala Harris and Biden, who I like, but uh, their four years were not much of a significance or importance because, as I said, the inflation went up. The gas price was less than a $2 a gallon. Now it's a $4 a gallon. And uh, illegal immigration across the border has brought so many issues in the U.S. Uh, criminal, criminality, drug abuse, rapes, murders have been increased so many times. So I think that's a uh, you know, if, we, if you want to look at uh, both of them, of course, Kamala Harris may not have uh, enough role in that, but still, the Democratic Party has to be responsible for, for what has happened. The war in, in four years of Trump's administration, there were no wars. Now we have war in Ukraine, we have a war in almost Iran, and uh, Israel and Hamas. Uh, the, you know, world paying attention to those uh, events. Right. I think we should look at. What is happening now? Uh, David K. Johnson, um, in terms of the Democrat agenda so far, what would it likely be under uh, Kamala Harris? Would it be entirely about how on earth can we allow Trump to become president again of the United States? Or would there be, you know, fairly substantive issues of policy and governance which she would likely bring up? Well, this will be a very interesting campaign because Donald doesn't have any policy issues. He doesn't know anything. And contrary to what the previous guest said, uh, Donald had a subpar performance, which I wrote about regularly during his administration. 
Uh, the reason gas was $2 a gallon was that Donald's mismanagement of the pandemic killed 900,000 Americans gratuitously. Kamala Harris is going to run on reproductive rights. Uh, the Dobbs decision that for the first time in history took a right away from Americans. She's going to run on individual liberty and not being subject to a specific religion as Project 2025 proposes. Donald is trying to separate himself from that project, but he endorsed it when it began and he's publicly said, I, I, don't, I never read it, I don't know what's in it, but there are parts of it I like and parts of it I don't, which of course tells you he's lying. So I, she will take the case, as Mr. Vickery said, to Donald Trump. She will call him out on his lies, his claims the economy was great when he was there. Under Joe Biden, the U.S. added 15 million jobs. That is more than every Republican president since World War II. Every Republican president since World War II. The U.S. has the strongest economy in the world. All the data show that. You can go to the uh, OECD, the IMF, uh, the United Nations, all the data shows that under Joe Biden, the U.S. has the strongest economy in the world with real rising wages. Uh, there is inflation at a little over 3%, which is, by the way, the average since World War II. So that issue is easily countered. And Kamala Harris, as a prosecutor, she was the uh, she was a street a, a, a courtroom prosecutor. She was the district attorney of a large California Did county you know and the California attorney general. Well, she's going to push uh, reproductive freedom uh, that you have a right to have birth control and you your doctor and and you sh should decide on your medical needs, not Congress. She's going to promote very hard economic growth and the record of the Biden administration, which has brought back lots and lots of jobs that were offshore and is fixing up America's crumbling orchestra or <clears throat> infrastructure. Donald promised the first thing he would do as president was to provide infrastructure. He never even introduced a bill. Biden introduced a bill, got it passed, and the, the shovels are now moving and the projects mm -hmm. are underway. Uh, she's also going to call Donald out for his lies. And Donald, whom I've covered for 36 years, I was the first person to write about him possibly becoming president in 1988. Donald lies. It's who he is. He is a con artist and a criminal and the third generation head of a four generation white collar crime family. So we're going to see the prosecutor running against the convicted felon. Right. And Donald has already announced he won't debate her. Uh, uh, that's an indication of how afraid he is of her. This is not good for Donald. It was much better if he'd run against Joe Biden for him. All right. Uh, Raymond Vickery, the world is also watching these elections. Um, Ukraine certainly is. Uh, if there is a change of guard in the United States and if Trump were to come to power, then, uh, you know, geostrategically, the situation in Europe would change dramatically. Uh, what's at stake from an international standpoint? Well, I think everything's at stake. Uh, all that has been built up to try to build peace and prosperity and stability uh, in the world will be uh, at risk. Uh, there's no question that Trump and uh, J.D. Vance, who's sort of like Trump on steroids, uh, have uh, picked isolationism as the way forward. You know, uh, America first was a slogan, first of all, used by, by those who didn't want to get involved in stopping Hitler and Nazism uh, before World War II. And that's exactly the kind of approach that's being taken. In regard to U.S.-India relations, the Biden administration has been all in on India and has asked for very little because we have such common interests and such common values. I think that all of that will go out the window under a uh, second uh, Trump J.D. Vance approach, which is strictly transactional. If you pay for it, you get it. Uh, it there's not a question of friendship. It's a question only of uh, withdrawing, protecting uh, your borders, uh, and uh, just trying to keep what is yours first, last, and only. Right. So the stakes are tremendously high. You know, in Ukraine, it's not a question really of stopping Putin at Ukraine. The question is whether or not you have appeasement which goes on. And we've had experience in the world with that. 
with Neville Chamberlain. And there's no question in my mind that the, uh, Putin wants to recreate the Russian Empire. Right. And he will start going after territory. And then we will really be uh, in the suit because of the presence of nuclear weapons. So I think there's a lot at stake. Uh, and I think that we have to uh, hope and pray that a more inclusive approach of, uh, of the Harris administration uh, will be the one chosen by the American people. All right. Well, I'd like to thank all of you very much for being with us. We're out of time on this discussion. The next couple of months in the United States will be watched all over the world. But fascinating day today with President Biden uh, standing down from uh, the election process in the United States as the Democrat candidate nominee. Uh, let's see what happens with Kamala Harris.